In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we call it St. Thomas Sunday, and it's considered one of the minor feasts of the Church. It's related to Jesus Christ, his appearance to St. Thomas, and he made him put his finger in the wound of his side and the nail signs on his hands. Why this is considered one of the feasts of the church? Actually, that's because of that this experience St. Thomas had, it was his personal experience, but also it is the church experience of Jesus' presence, the resurrected or the raised up or the risen Christ in the church, the, the alive Jesus Christ in the church. This is a personal experience for St. Thomas, but it's also an experience of the whole church. He is present and he is among us in the midst of the church and he is alive to the end of the ages. Before talking about St. Thomas and, and this feast, I would like to go back to the readings of the church on that day and starting from the Vesper, I like the analogy that the church is providing us through the the readings of the church starting from the Vesper. If you attended yesterday the Vesper, you're going to see the, the miracle that Jesus did on the very beginning of his ministry when he was calling his, uh, his disciples. So the, the miracle was of St. Peter. When he tried, he used all what he learned as a professional fisherman and he didn't get any fishes, any fish. He didn't, get, he didn't get any fish. So he met Jesus, and Jesus asked him to go to the deep sea. And he caught a lot of fish to the point they weren't able to take the net out of the water. And from that day, he washed his net, and he left it behind him. And he started to minister with Jesus. But unfortunately, even though St. Peter was considered one of the, of the disciples of Jesus Christ, he started a new story. But the story, this story, he was the center of it. He was himself, St. Peter himself was the center of this story. Because he was waiting for the kingdom of his master, Jesus Christ. And the kingdom for him was an earthly kingdom. So he was looking for a great career he's going to be having. Maybe he will be a prime minister or a minister or whatever. He's going to have a big office on, on this kingdom, which, was, which turned to be a total and complete disappointment on the cross. But the good thing, what we read on the morning, on the, the morning prayer, the, the gospel of the morning prayer, is again another meeting between the risen Jesus with Peter, who was, he went, who, who looked for his net and he went back to his old profession, which he left for three years and a half, and looked for his net, and went to go fishing. <coughs> and he met Jesus Christ again, at the same situation. And Jesus asked him to go and, and, and throw his net on the water. And he, he caught a lot of fishes, a lot of fish, to the point that St. John said to him, this is the Lord. And he met the Lord. But now, to start a new story, St. Peter wasn't his 
he, he wasn't the center of this story, but Jesus was the center of his story. And this story, it, was, there, it has a lot of pain and suffering for St. Peter and for, for all the disciples. But it ends by they, they are, they're going to sit in heaven, as Jesus said. They're going to sit in heaven to judge the whole world. To, ju to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. I like the analogy. The, the, the two meetings. The first meeting, St. Peter was hoping to have a, a good career, a good office on the kingdom of Jesus. Who he thought that he is just a, a, a savior, not a savior by the meaning we understand, but a, an earthly savior. But the second meeting, it turns him to be the, 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 the apostle and the disciple who accepted to be crucified. And when, and when he was going to be crucified, he denied to be crucified like Jesus. He wanted to be upside down because he thought he doesn't deserve to be crucified like God. Like God. The third, second one today is, is this, uh, the, the center of the story or the, the, the celebration of today, St. Thomas. As I said in the beginning, he put his finger on the wounds and the nail signs of Jesus Christ. And it was his experience. The tradition is saying that he went to the Far East, to India, to preach the gospel there. I think every time he would talk about Jesus Christ, he would say, my hands touched his wounds. I have seen him crucified. I, I have heard him teaching. I, I walked with him and I saw his miracles. He has given me to make miracles myself. But, and I saw him dying on the cross. But I touched his wound. That's the experience. That's a personal experience we should get. The church is trying to put before our eyes the, the resurrection every day. Or actually, all the time. On daily basis, on the matin prayer, we remember Jesus who is risen from the dead. On weekly basis, Sunday is a weekly commemoration of the resurrection. On monthly basis, the 29th of each month of the, the Coptic calendar, we remember the, the Annunciation, the, the, the Nativity, and we remember the resurrection. On the yearly basis, we, we remember the, the, resurrec the, the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the resurrection feast or on the Easter. So we need to have the resurrection before our eyes. And this makes us our life to change. Our life should change. That's how resurrection is, as I talked last week. Resurrection is something we practice, we live through repentance. And we see that on, on the reading we have heard today from the, the, the St. Paul. He was saying, But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you, you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, lying, it's of the old man. If we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we cannot lie. It's not just lying, but it, it doesn't match the new life. It doesn't match the, the people who believe in, in Jesus, the resurrected God who accepted death and he was raised up for our salvation. If we are going to have a new story, 
I talked to you about the, the story of St. Peter before and after resurrection. If you're going to be having a new story, if some, any one of us want to introduce himself, what he's going to say? He's going to say, my name is so-and-so, and my, my degree. That's how the people are introducing them th themselves. And the more degrees I have, the bigger the list of degrees I have, and certificates I have, and trainings I have, the, the more I like to show that. Or I'm introducing myself. That's how people are in, introducing themselves. The, the career I'm working on, maybe if, if it's a, a well-known company, this will be a great privilege. But to tell you the truth, all our earthly story is going toward us. We are, the, the things we, which we are, are looking for, we are looking for a good, a good degree that will qualify us for a good job and a good career. But we know that all these things will not stay to, to, the, to the end of our life. So one day we're going to retire. The things which we have, we, we look for a, a good car. One day it's going to be old. And we're going to leave it. Every, our, our story, our earthly story is going toward death. But when we are looking for a new story, Jesus is it's, uh, it's sent, he's, uh, he, the, the center of this story. And through, through this story, we're going to be having eternal life. We're going to be, our names are not going to, book, to be put on a plate on a grave, but it's going to be written on, by letters of light in heaven. That's the people who believed in Jesus, who lived the new man, who left or who put off or let aside lying. And a big list uh, St. Paul mentioned here. And he didn't just say, said, or says that we should leave aside or let aside or put off these things. But he put on the other side the virtues which we, we should follow. He said, put, put away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. By the way, I remember a story. There was a man, they saw him running very fast and looking upwards. And when they asked him why he's doing that, he said, a friend of mine or my brother, he's upset from me. And I'm trying to catch him before the sunset. So my friend or my brother won't be upset from me after the sunset. That's how people live the commandments of Jesus Christ, the commandments of the Bible. So he said, do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but not just that, but rather let him labor, not just for himself, for himself. let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who has need. It's not just to work to fulfill his needs, but to work to satisfy the needs of needy people. I mean, that's how we, we should, our life should be changed. If we believe in Jesus who is risen, if Christ is risen, truly he is risen, we should live up to that standard. That's how the people who believe in resurrection should live and glory be to God forever. Amen.